In our last video, we discussed what would happen if Vigilante Deku found Himiko Toga. And you reached the light goal for part two, so we're continuing the story, but click on the card in the top right if you haven't seen the first part. In My Hero Academia's All Out War arc, we saw Dobby taking the stage of his reveal that he's actually Toya Todoroki, the long believed to be departed member of the Todoroki family, who was the center of a lot of drama in the Todoroki family. Toya reveals his identity in front of Endeavor and Shoto and completely breaks Endeavor's spirit at at that moment, something that we'll see more of as season 6 continues and Endeavor wakes up. During Toya's reveal, we see Deku screaming out to him to tell him that he's wrong, that despite everything that's happened to him, he knows how Toya's family is hurting with him gone, and that at the end of the day, Dobby deciding to burn all those people and not return home to try to solve this and make things better is his own choice. He didn't use Endeavor's quirk to burn all those people, he used his own quirk, echoing his words to Shoto during the sports festival. Toya yells back at Deku still trying to enforce his way of looking at things on Shoto and everyone there, but Deku has created a strand of hope for Endeavor and the others that they make use of to continue pushing on for just a while longer. Afterwards, Dobby escapes along with Spinner and Shigaraki thanks to Compress's efforts, but he's very quiet throughout the events that follow, like the prison break, even though Spinner has a lot to say about the clear change in Shigaraki's personality and voice, and how that's not who he decided to follow. Dobby told Hawks previously that he doesn't really care about the League of Villains and Shigaraki are all for one that much, they're more like a means to an end. But as much as Dobby doesn't want to follow orders, and as much as he doesn't care who else is on the team, there is someone in the League that we've seen Dobby have a soft spot for, and that's where our story picks up again. In the middle of the night, we see a house that looks completely abandoned with writing and graffiti all over the walls that say things like Toga the Terrible, Demon, Die, Get Lost, Worst Parents Ever, Your Fault for Having Her, Vampire Demon's Lair, and even more. This of course is the former home of Himiko Toga, a nice property where her parents still lived after she ran away that eventually became unlivable because of their previous attachment to their child. Following her meeting of All for One at the end of our last video, Himiko Himiko Toga wanders into her house, and she remembers Deku's words, that no matter how hard things are, there's someone willing to lend their hand to her at UA if she just reaches back. She enters her childhood home and remembers her parents saying, we did our best, but nothing worked, that girl is demonic, and she questions if someone like her really even deserves to be saved. She was ready to go to UA with Deku, but all for one reminded her of the role that she has to play for Bubai Gawara's sake, and now her mind is racing and filling with doubt. Toga walks to her home walking past things that used to be recognizable to her, and she hears things in her head that she's heard all of her life. No one's gonna accept that creepy side of yours. No one will ever like you. Your face is so scary. Seeing that her family threw all of her stuff away in her room, she smiles as tears start to run down her face, and she's reminded that there truly is no place for her anymore. But as she begins to leave, we see Dobby lingering on a nearby windowsill, watching her walk out. And Dobby goes, you were quiet during that meeting of the pickled plum in Tamora. That's not like you. Toga says it's not like you said a word. What are you doing following me around? Pretty suspicious, don't you think? Dobby says he was just interested in what she was up to. As a fellow person who ran away from home and had to survive on the run, he somewhat relates to Toga, despite the fact that she's way too crazy. Toga comments on the fact that Dobby is the one who's way too crazy, and says his scars have gotten much worse because he doesn't know when to stop burning things, even to the point where he's ready to burn himself away. But Dobby stands up and says, Aw, well who would have thought that someone like you had feelings after all? Dobby says sometimes, burning something that used to be precious is a perfect way of letting go. But in another sense, the bodies of our loved ones are cremated and we try to remember them forever. He says that he alone stands at the crossroads of these two truths. And he says he doesn't know what he believes in more right now, but he does know one thing. This pathetic world doesn't give a damn whether you smile or you cry. The sun will rise again tomorrow no matter what happens to either of us, and it'll continue to burn and burn as a constant reminder that the new day will come. So for now, let's laugh. Because that's what we were born to do, no matter what's happened until now. As Dobby activates his quirk and burns Toga's entire house down in a second with a wave of flames, burning her past and freeing her from it. Dobby jumps down and says, I relate to wanting to go back home to see what's changed. But trust me, Himiko Toga, having a home to go to in the first place will only bring you pain. So from tonight on, be free. Free to be exactly who it is that you are. 
Dobby passes twice his blood over to Toga as Toga remembers Deku's words. The League of Villains are murderers who've taken the smiles and peace away from everyone. But as she watches her home burn down and clutches twice his blood in her vial, she smiles and returns back to where Shigaraki and the others have gathered. But Dobby's night isn't over yet. There's a flashback and we see that during Toga's conversation with Deku in the warehouse, Dobby was actually there in the darkness, watching and listening to everything. And realizing that Deku is definitely someone that needs to be taken out, Dobby knows that now is the only chance that he has to do it without pesky little Shoto getting involved. And he starts to think about how he can do it, but knowing that Endeavor could be lingering nearby and still not ready to face him, he devises a strategy all on his own. And now we move on to the night after. The night was dark and cold. The streets of Japan were empty as most people were safely tucked away in their shelters. But for Vigilante Deku, this was just another night of patrol. He had been tracking down a group of escapees from Tartarus Prison who were all sent to wear him down and keep him isolated so he could never reach all for one. So ultimately, taking these villains down and capturing as many of them as he can really only ended up serving all for one's purpose. As he walked through the deserted streets, he hears a loud explosion in the distance. He quickly made his way towards the source of the noise, and as he got closer, he could see the blue glow of flames illuminating the night sky. As he reached the outskirts of the city, he saw a figure standing in the middle of the street. The figure was covered in flames, and it was clear that this was the only person that it could be. It was Dabi, or Toya Todoroki, Shoto's brother. Behind Dabi was a large group of Tartarus escapees attacking the gates of a lesser known hero school that was converted into a shelter, but none of their heroes or students have enough power to push back against the escapees. Deku ignores Dabi, who hasn't yet seen him, as he uses the surrounding buildings to whip swing around before flying right into the crowd of villains covered in smoke as he starts taking them out with his hand hand combat. Deku easily dodges through various attacks and continues to string up the different escapees of Black Whip, but he's never attempted to capture this many people of different strands of Black Whip before, so he starts using brute force and speed to overwhelm them until a huge blast of fire heads his way that he narrowly avoids using Danger Sense and his quick speed paired with Float. Dobby lets out a sinister laugh as he sees his opponent. So you're the one who's been causing us so much trouble, he says, as his voice is distorted by flames that engulf his body. Deku knew that this would be a tough fight, but with nearly all of the Tartarus escapees captured in his black whip and still tethered to him, he stands ready in front of Dobby. Deku has to fight Dobby while keeping his black whip activated on all of these different prisoners, or they'll continue to wake up and attack the gate, thanks to a healing quirk user in their ranks. But Dobby attacks like he doesn't care who he burns. He sends blast of flames in Deku's direction, completely scorching several of the villains that Deku had captured. As Deku panics and doesn't know what to do, realizing that he doesn't have a quirk that directly counters fire. So he tries using air force to blow the flames away, but they're too hot and it's too late. The damage is already done. Dobby mocks Deku, saying, what's wrong, hero? Another person you couldn't save? What happened to all that spirit you had before? Did that fake hero society keep you propped up and put a smile on your face? Did your faith in Endeavor and the other heroes finally break? Or did you realize that you can't measure up to the man whose quirk you're really using? All Might. Deku gets angry at the loss of those escapees at the hands of Dobby's quirk, as well as his words, and he doesn't waste any time charging towards Dobby with his fist clenched tightly. Dobby responded with a blast of flames from his hands, but Deku was able to dodge it and land the punch on Dobby's face. The impact of the punch sent Dobby flying backwards, but he quickly regained his footing and retaliated with another blast of flames. This time, the flames hit Deku, and he could feel the intense heat on his skin. The two continued their battle, exchanging blows and blasts of flames. The street was quickly becoming a war zone with debris and rubble flying everywhere. The fight was intense and it seemed like anyone could win. Dobby's flames were causing major damage to the surroundings, buildings were burning, and the streets were filled with smoke from Dobby's flames. Deku's determination and fighting spirit was admirable, but Dobby's flames are starting to burn away at his flesh, and even worse, more of the escapees continued to be burned by Dobby. Deku's arms and face were covered in burns, but he 
refused to back down. He kept fighting, determined to protect the innocent people who were hiding in the nearby shelter, but his arms were burned to the point where his black whip isn't responding as it normally would, and eventually the Tartarus escapees that were captured break free and start just running away, realizing that Dobby is insane and he was just using them all along. Dobby says, I saw your battle with my pathetic little brother Shoto. I watched as you made him even more perfect. How my father cheered and behaved as his little project finally bore fruit. You weren't even born with a quirk on your own. You should have always known that you could never be a hero. As Dobby releases a crazy hell spider that Deku barely manages to dodge by cutting between two buildings. But it's a feint it seems as Dobby appears there right where Deku was going and prepares a plus ultra prominence burn point blank right in front of Deku. But in that instant, we learned that Deku was actually getting Dobby right where he wanted him. During the fight, Deku used smokescreen to add smoke to the smoke that Dobby generated using his flames and subtly used movements paired with air force to force that smoke into certain areas, leaving one open and clear path for Deku to take, meaning that spot would be where the battle was gonna be decided as he knew that Dobby would take the bait and meet him there. In a split second, we see that Deku actually has Black Whip coming from the bottom of his feet and the back of his legs attached to the two buildings that were behind him. And as the Black Whip tightens and contracts, it sends Deku flying backwards as he completely dodges Dobby's attack. And then all at once, Deku activates Fajin to give himself an insane boost of speed as he grabs the Black Whip tendrils of his burned hands and shoots himself at Dobby at high speed, not even visible to the naked eye. Flying around Dobby's prominence burn in a spiral as Deku lands a powerful kick to Dobby's midsection as he screams Manchester smash and Dobby goes crashing into the ground, clearing all the smoke and fire from the area nearby as it begins to rain from the force of Deku's kick, pushing all the smoke high into the clouds. Vigilante Deku emerges victorious, but at a great cost. He was severely injured and covered in burns and he knew that he needed medical attention and that he needed to secure Dobby, but seeing that Dobby was out like a light and completely out of commission, Deku rushes to the shelter since his first priority is to make sure that the people inside are safe. As he limps towards the shelter, he could hear the sounds of sirens in the distance and the police were finally almost there alongside other heroes like Endeavor. And it's here where Deku collapses, passing out from the sheer exhaustion. He wakes up inside the back of an ambulance, being attended to by the EMT, but to his shock, he sees Endeavor large as ever, barely able to fit inside the back of the moving hospital truck, as Endeavor questions Deku, asking him if he's okay, and telling him to stay conscious. Endeavor says, Midoriya, was this Toya? Did Toya do this? Where is he? I'm sorry I couldn't make it here earlier. My house was burning down and Toya Shrine, I... This must have been him. Deku realizes that this means that they weren't able to find Toya and that somehow he'd escaped. And he thinks back to Toga's escape and remembers the black liquid that came out of her mouth and suspects that Dobby escaped through very similar means. But he shares this with Endeavor. Endeavor says that that's too bad, but listen, Midoriya, you can rest now because we're gonna go get Toya and all the others and put a stop to this for good. Deku questions how they're gonna do that and Endeavor tells Deku that Lady Nagant has finally woken up from the hospital and she's given them the meetup location of where she was supposed to bring Deku to all for one. So that means they finally have a location. Deku sits up though and begins wrapping up his arms as Endeavor looks on shocked and he says, then what are we waiting for? Thank you all so much. This was part two to what if Vigilante Deku found Toga. Now we had Vigilante Deku found Dobby. And it seems like the story really is picking up. But what's going to happen when Deku, who's now been injured from his fight against Moonfish and Dobby, tries heading over to All for One's location? And how will these chance meeting between these characters and Vigilante Deku change the events that are to come in the final arc of the series if we continue the story all the way there? It's definitely up to you guys. So please hit that like goal like you did in the last video. And in our next part, we'll discuss what's going to happen when when Vigilante Deku meets all for one.